Welcome traders to another Tickmill earnings report preview with me Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's report it's important to adhere to the risk disclaimer. The material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information and opinions expressed by me are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay let's jump into today's report. We are looking at Block Block report earnings after the New York close this evening. We're looking for an earnings per share print of uh, 18 cents on revenue of 4.23 billion. There's a whisper number on the street that the EPS could print at 23 cents. In terms of what to look for in the report, investors will be focusing on Block's GPV, a key metric tracking the total dollar amount net of refunds of all card payments processed by sellers using the company's payments ecosystem. It includes peer-to-peer -peer payments as well as transactions with merchants that use Block's mobile payment app. Block charges transaction fees on these gross payments and those fees constitute a major source of revenue. Transaction fees are generally calculated on a percentage of the total transaction amount processed. The greater the GB fee, uh, the GBV, sorry, the more transaction-based revenue Block is able to generate. GB, GPV also provides an indication of how many users the company has on its platform. If Block can attract more users to its main payments ecosystem, then it will be able to direct more traffic to its other businesses. This helps fuel more revenue because Block takes a cut of that transactions. In addition to Block's GPV, has been fueled by acquisitions that provide business services to different clients and its additional businesses help spur people to use more of their other services beyond the company's well-known cash app brand. In the last 16 quarters, uh, Block's GPV has only declined year over year one time, and that was in the second quarter of fiscal year 2020. Since then, Block has reported six straight quarters of accelerating growth in the uh, Second quarter of fiscal year 2021, uh, GPV rose 87.8%, the biggest increase in recent quarters. In fact, each of the last three quarters in the fiscal year 2021 posted the biggest quarterly GPV growth compared to the three years prior. Um, analysts continue to expect healthy growth of 37.4%, whilst they expect that growth to be slower than the fourth quarter of 2021. It, uh, it should prove to be faster than the first quarter of 2021 uh, in a comparable. So let's look at some of the statistical trading patterns around the block release. Um, shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings, eight out of the last 12 previous reports. On average, the stock has moved up 3.8% in the first day of trading after the company reports earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, it's more likely to trade lower one day after the earnings for an average loss of negative uh, 0.8%. Short increase, uh, interest has increased by 11.1% since the company's last earnings release, whilst the stock has drifted lower by 13.4% uh, from its open uh, following the earnings release to 47% below its 200-day moving average of $187.92. In terms of what the options market is telling us in uh, implied volatility and where we could see the price move, looking at a potential 16.1% move on earnings, the stock has averaged a 10.9% move in recent quarters. Looking at sentiment and flow, we, uh, we note that uh, there's been some decent buying, 5,024 contracts of a $95 call expiring Friday, June 17th. Options order flow sentiment in general, though, is bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has 69% expecting an earnings beat. Consensus estimates are for earnings to decline year over year by 55%, with revenue decreasing by 16.3%. As mentioned, short interest has increased in the company to uh, to print as high as 11.1%. Let's take a look at the charts now and see where there might be some uh, some trading opportunities in the uh, in the post release here. So, as with a lot of tech, obviously we have uh, have seen some significant downsides. Uh, but it is noteworthy at the moment, whilst we hold this $93.39 area, there is the potential. If we can get a move back through the $110 area, I'd like to be long this stock 
looking for advance up into test monthly projected range resistance back into the $140 area. As pullbacks remain supported, we will actually have an equality objective test set up at uh, $159.92 on the upside. So that's the bullish scenario. If, uh, if there's a negative response to earnings, then it's notable we have this high volume nose on the weekly chart at $75.60. So any close through $93.39, to my mind, would be an opportunity to engage on the short side, targeting that move down to the $75.60 area, and then we'll see if buyers step in to, uh, to try and put in a counter trend corrective rally. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.